David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another ink review. Today, I have for you a brand new ink from Papier Plume, which is the latest addition to their New Orleans collection. Papier Plume sells items via their website, but they also have a retail location in the heart of the French Quarter in New Orleans. They're a block away from Bourbon Street in a very colorful neighborhood. If you go half a block in one direction, there is a voodoo museum, and half a block in the other direction, there is a big voodoo gift shop. Over the years, they have produced a number of inks that relate to the history and tradition of New Orleans. Uh, they have colors like Red Beans and Rice and Iron Lace and Bayou Nightfall. And the latest addition to that category is called Desire. Uh, there is a famous play and a movie which takes place in New Orleans called A Streetcar Named Desire. Now, while the title is very symbolic, the literal meaning refers to an actual streetcar that ran up and down Desire Street. So, what is the color of Desire? Uh, in order to get a closer look at this ink, please join me over here at Camera 2. To begin with, if you're familiar with my ink reviews, I typically use the writing sample to discuss a film or a film genre. For this go around, I'm not going to discuss the film adaptation of A Streetcar Named Desire, that'd be a little bit too easy, but what I will be discussing is one of my strongest recommendations I've had in a while. Uh, it's something I've recommended to a number of people and every one of them have come back and thanked me. What is it? Uh, you'll find out here in just a bit. To begin with, here is the bottle for Desire. Uh, Papier Plume does a great job of coming up with unique label designs for their bottles, and Desire is no different. Um, first of all, it's hard to tell here, but in the background are quotes from the movie Streetcar Named Desire, or the play, whichever you choose. Uh, and at first I thought these were something like letters you would use for typesetting for a printing press, but uh, those letters would actually be backwards. So I looked into it and this is actually a take on the street tiles marking Desire Street. I think that looks really nice and has some meaning behind it. The bottle contains 30 milliliters of ink, and my favorite feature of these bottles is the wax dipping and stamping that they do on the cap. Uh, you can see here there's a nice fleur-de-lis stamp, and I've always liked the additional wax drippings. Uh, there's a really long one here uh, that was being held on very tenuously, and as I was preparing this review and taking off the lid multiple times, it broke off. So I had to perform a little wax repair with a lighter. It's still not that great on there. I'll have to do some more repair on it later. But yeah, their bottles are fun. But let's take a look at the important part, which is what is inside. And here is the ink, Papier Plume Desire. Uh, I would describe it as kind of a uh, highly saturated, dusty purple. Um, you know, it, it's unlike any other purple I have in my collection. It seems like you have more saturated, vibrant purples and then kind of more reddish purples. Like a more reddish purple, I would say, is something like Yamabudo or Monteverde Blueberry Muffin. Um, and then you have something like your darker, more vibrant purples like Cross Violet uh, or even Monteverde Birthday Cake or something like the Lamy Dark Lilac, uh, or even Birmingham's uh, ink company's Andy Warhol Pop Art Purple. This is what the ink looks like on some 52 gram Tomoe River paper. Um, this here is just kind of smeared on with a letter opener, uh, and then this is applied with a Q-tip. You can see that with a Q-tip, uh, it is fairly saturated, and on the heavier applications, you do get a little bit of shading, but it's something that really only occurs when it's very, very heavy. So here I just had a greater variation from, of uh, application from very light to very heavy, and you can kind of see the variation in that. And in regard to ghosting and bleeding, I'd say that's very low. Um, especially for an ink that is rather wet, uh, it's something that does well on this paper. So here we have Papier Plume Desire. For this top portion here, I use this 3.8 millimeter uh, Pilot Parallel pen uh, that uh, does a really good job of giving you a, a really fat line. So if you're into calligraphy, these parallel pens are something nice to pick up. With this pen, with the number of passes, you can see that it gets a little bit darker. Uh, on This is Rhodia 80 gram paper. Uh, I do find that the ghosting and bleeding is rather low. 
Uh, and the, I'd say the shade is medium. So when you're writing with normal text, I, I didn't find that it, there was a great deal of, uh, line, uh, of shading, but that there was when you were putting down heavier applications. So there's a little bit. And I said the sheen is low. And then you could see here with a Q-tip application uh, on this Rhodia paper that again, we have very little bleed through or ghosting. Actually, let me get a little bit closer in here. So in regard to pens, the very first pen I have here is the Estabrook Camden Composition. Uh, this is something that I'll be reviewing in the somewhat near future. Uh, and I just kind of like the, the retro old school look to this. And so we have the Estabrook. And this is the Camden composition. And this is a fine stainless steel nib. Then next up, we have a pen from Wancher, which is the Sakai Sugaru Row Age. I just love the patterning on this material. It just goes to show you the different techniques that you could use with Arushi, and just the coloring on this thing is amazing. I do have a full review of this pen if you'd like to see it, but I just love it. And so we have the Wancher, and this is the Sakai. Sigaru Rowage. And this is a medium stainless steel nib. And finally, we have a pen from Platinum, and that is the Platinum 3776 Carnelian, uh, which has some really nice sparkle. Actually get the pen to focus in here. There, some really nice sparkle in this material. I think it adds a, a bit of vibrance and life to it. So we have the Platinum 3776. And this is the Carnelian. And this is a broad 14 karat gold nib. Okay, now for the writing sample and my recommendation. I said that I highly recommend watching a show called In and of Itself. Uh, it is the filming of a stage presentation of a show which ran for over 500 performances in New York City. I know it can be difficult to not watch a trailer or read about a show before you watch it, but trust me, it's best to go in blind and really not know too much about what you're about to see. Uh, the show is hard to describe, but the emotional impact it will leave you with is profound. Okay, now for the launcher.
The show is a performance by a man by the name of Derek Delgadio, and yes, I said magic. At its core, in and of itself, is a magic show, but I hate to even bring that up. It is not an abracadabra, Vegas kind of magic show. It is considerably different. There are only about five or six tricks in the 90 minute runtime, but each illusion is incredibly impactful, with some that will literally leave you in tears. Okay, and now for the platinum. I said that the show is an examination of identity, what it means and feels to be seen by someone else. It is mesmerizing, beautiful, captivating, and impactful. Uh, most movies or shows are disposable. Five minutes after they're done, you've forgotten about them, but in and of itself is different. Uh, it is something that will stay with you. Um, a successful piece of art is one that has the ability to transfer emotions and make the audience feel something. Uh, in those regards, in and of itself is extremely successful and I can't recommend it enough. In the United States is currently available to watch exclusively on the Hulu streaming service. I am unsure about viewing options outside of the US, but it is well worth tracking down. If you watch the show or if you have seen the show, feel free to leave a comment below letting everyone know what you felt about the experience. And no spoilers about the show itself, please. It is best to let folks experience it for themselves. So I find the flow to be medium on this heavily saturated ink. Uh, the drying time is fairly quick. With the fine nib, or at the fine nib, it was dried before 10 seconds. And uh, with the medium, it was dry between 10 and 15. So it did really well in those regards. And so let's go ahead and put a little water on here for some waterproof test. And while we're doing that, let's take a look at the chromatography. I was interested to see what this chromatography was going to end up looking like. Uh, you can see here that there is some violets that then move into some pinks, uh, and then it moves into some kind of maroon reds, and then finally a very vibrant blue. This is what it ends up looking like. Uh, and you can just tell that it's very saturated blue, which I think adds to the saturation of the overall color, but it looks nice. In regard to the waterproof test. This ink doesn't profess itself to be waterproof. Um, it's not too bad. Um, I wouldn't call it waterproof, but it didn't fail tremendously, so it was decent in those regards. I said here that Papier Plume Desire is a pleasant, muted purple, which is unlike any other purple in my collection. It performs well and is priced reasonably. Um, one of these bottles is $10 and is available on the Papier Plume site. Uh, if you are watching this the day the, uh, the day I post this, the ink actually launched today. Now, uh, I mentioned that uh, this is going to be a permanent edition or a somewhat permanent edition, now, who, what can be permanent these days, but it is not a limited edition ink. So um, while I do highly recommend it, uh, it's not something that is going to go away, uh, that it's going to be offered by Papier Plume for a while. So I strongly recommend you go check this out, um, that it's a nice purple to add to your collection. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.